Hey everybody, Joshua the Window Cleaner here, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to build a window screen. Um, this is something that I've been doing for a while and I now have a screenshot. So I'm in the screenshot today. I'm gonna to show you every step of the way how to make a window screen. And um, this is just how we do it. We do it at 45 degrees with metal corners. I'm gonna show you everything how we do it. We have white uh, pull tabs to match the frames um, that are metal. It's all about quality here at Positive Enterprises, which is my business. So. I'm going to teach you how to make a quality screen that's not all bowed in and you know all the problems that you probably ran into. So hopefully I'll be able to make this video pretty quick. I already have the measurements here that we're going to be taking in the first measurement. It's a kind of a smaller one. It's a 29 and 11 sixteenths um, by 20 inch and an eighth. So we're going to go ahead and do our cuts, everything like that, but I'm gonna be explaining everything that I'm doing. The first thing you wanna make sure you do is you wanna have some safety glasses. So these are kind of messed up a little bit, so I wanna wipe the inside out with one of my towels. So um, let me go do that real quick. All right, got my glasses all cleared up, and I wanna show you my, my rig or jig or however you wanna call it, but this is my jig. So it lines up, as you can see right here, it lines up with the zero right here and so that you know you're getting a perfect cut. So this is how we do it. We would move it up and slide it over to the measurement that we need to measure, which is going to be, let's see, let's check our measurements, 29 and 11 sixteenths. So I'll go ahead and move this to 29 and 11 sixteenths and then that way our cut is perfect. So, all right, 29 and 11 sixteenths. and 11 sixteenths. I always check my measurements twice just to make sure. So 29, 11 sixteenths, 29, 11 sixteenths, perfect. Um, we're gonna be using 5 sixteenths frame, white frame today. And we have them in 12 foot sticks. Um, and then we just make sure we butt it up against here. Um, and if you need to do this, you can also do this with a tape measure very easily and um, just real quick. So every little line, if we use the top of the tape measure, Every little line is a sixteenth. So if it helps you out, um, if you're bad about measuring, just count them out as the sixteenths. So like that's why every, every uh, one of them that I typically do, it'll say three sixteenths or 11 sixteenths or whatever. Um, it just helps um, our brain know that there's 16 on a tape measure per inch. So this one's 29 and 11 sixteenths. So that's what I have it set to. I'm gonna go ahead and do the cuts. I wanna make sure my piece is all nice and clean, clear of debris. So you like this one's kinda of got a damage on the end. I'll go ahead and cut that off. So I'll move this to zero degree. Cut my piece off. And I have a trash can in this little hole so I can just throw my little piece in here. All right, now that I know I got a nice clean piece, go back to the 45 degree angle, make sure it butts up. And you never want to put your hand on this side of the saw. It's actually got two little things that says not on this side of the saw. So as long as you stay on this side, you're safe. So I'm going to put my finger here, um, keep it out of the way, and my other hand up here. Okay, and I got my cut, got my extra piece over here. And then I'm going to just flip this piece over because I need to make another 45 degree cut. And I'm going to place it right here where it needs to be at the 45 degree where I know I'm going to get a good cut. I'll line my saw up before I push the blades. All right, perfect. It's going to be right there. Cut that piece. Now, sometimes whenever you flip it over like that, it might get a little bit of this in the track. You'll see it like bend. It's just this saw in particular, I believe. But I just take a uh, needle nose pliers and just do like so, clamp it, and it's right back to normal. And you still have a really nice cut. So, all right, so that is the first piece. I'm gonna cut another piece because we're gonna need two, one for each side, and it will be the same side. So I'll go ahead and cut my little piece off here. Okay. Another piece away. Slide it all the way down here, just like I did before. Turn it back to 45 degree. All right, flip it over, drag it over here, line it up perfect. Okay. That one didn't do it that time, so don't do it every time, but the first time it did, so sometimes you get a nice clean cut like that. Okay, I'm gonna line them up, make sure that they're the same size. Perfect size. Okay, then I'll take my tape measure also and just check it. So we're 20. Boom. One, two, three, four, five, 
11, there we go, perfect. So my cuts are perfect, my size is right. Okay, I have these two pieces right there. Okay, now the next one I need to cut is going to be 20 and 1 8th, or would be 2 16th. So 20 and 1 8th, depending on how you know, if you know how to read a tape measure, you'll know it's 20 and 1 8th. But just how we're gonna do the, the video today is 20 and 2 16th. So go ahead and cut my little bitty piece off. Drag it over, slide it over. 45 degree, make sure it's everything's all butted up. Make sure it's butted up here. There's no piece, little chunk missing, or a little piece thing. Make sure all this is gonna be nice, okay? So, now before we do it, we need to, we need to slide the jig over. So we got 20 and 2 16 So we'll go to 20 and 2 16ths. 20 and 2 16ths. And right there. I'm vibrating it to get it to move over just a little bit. I've learned that that works for this jig. Um, I'm not sure where you can get this jig if you're wondering, but the easy way to do it is just use your tape measure and you can draw a line and then do your cuts that way. And you can use a smaller saw. You don't have to use this one. I would recommend uh, make sure you get the right proper blade for whatever frame that you're using to cut. All right, so. did the little thing I was talking about so you just take your needle nose and just bend it back and it's just perfectly fine the cut is still nice and clean so there's one piece and we need to do one more of them so we'll slide it over here to the zero cut it over. slide it back to the 45 degree make sure it's button up against here make sure it butts up against that So now we have every piece that we're gonna use to make the screen cut. So we have the two end pieces here and then this piece here. And you always want to make sure when you uh, do your measurements where the springs and pull tabs will need to go. When there's a, there's a track on your window and at the top of that track is where you're, if, it's a, if there's like a deep little um, part in there where your screen can go in, that's the part that you're, you're gonna need to put the springs. And then on the bottom of that, it, it's always on the reverse side of the springs. Um, you put your pull tabs. So I'll go ahead and take you over here to the table. All right, so I have a wooden table here and I also have laid down. This is the padding that goes into a toolbox if you understand what I'm talking about. Um, that's what this is. So I use the padding from a toolbox to, to make it where the screen doesn't move as much because if you have just a wooden table, you'll notice that the screen moves a lot. Um, this is what I've done. I've seen people rig up other jigs and all kinds of things, which has been done in this shop particularly, but not with me. Um, but I just used a toolbox mat, and as soon as you put the frame on there, it doesn't move and slide around. So hopefully that's a really good tip. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the screen together. And because I wrote down all the dimensions and everything, I know that the springs and pull tab go on the 29 and 11 16 side. So that's going to be the bigger side. So I'll start with the bigger side and you can start wherever you want, but this is just how I do it. So I put the spring on there and then I put a corner on there and you want to make sure to have a rubber mallet um, to hit your corners in because sometimes they're, they'll be a little tight, but you want that because that's going to make the screen a lot tighter. Um, then you would put your little piece on there because this is going to be a side. Kind of get it started and then just kind of hammer away with your rubber mallet, but try not to hit it so hard that it damages the frame because you definitely can. So if you need to go back and forth with it to make it fit snug, you can, no problem. Okay, and then we're just going to build it out here. Okay, so I'm going to put my corner in there, hit it like that. Okay, be gentle with it. Put the bigger piece on there now. Okay. And I'll put it back on here, go a little bit more. You can see that fits up snug. Okay. Now this side, make sure to put your spring on the same side. So the spring goes over here. Okay. And go ahead and put your corner in there. Get it started a little bit. Be careful not to damage your frame because you can definitely damage your frame if you don't put your corners in 
properly, especially the one with the spring. It's going to be a little bit tighter because you got something going in there versus um, the way this one's going to go. So I'll go ahead and at the last piece, sometimes it's really difficult um, to get the last piece on. So you just make sure to, uh, I'm going to make sure it goes like this. The corner goes here. I'm going to put this corner in first. So here we go. Perfect. So then I will put this end on here. Okay, let's see that. Perfect. And the last piece here, this sometimes can be difficult to get it in there. But once you get it in there and get it started, it gets pretty easy. So then you just keep hammering it in. Okay. Perfect. All right, so now we have a screen frame that you can see. You just want to make sure all your ends are really nice and put together because that's all about the quality. So you can see how all my corners look great. Okay. Now on this particular screen frame, the next thing you need to know is uh, what size spline goes in this groove. And so when I say spline, I'm talking about, it's almost like a gasket, but I'm talking about spline. This is called spline and it goes in here. Okay. So I'm using uh, 0.185 on this particular one. Uh, most typical screens in my area when we're doing repairs and things like that, it's going to be 165. Now, before we get started, I want to show you a trick that I learned over time. If you notice, these frames are already bowed out a little bit. They're, you know, I'm being dramatic with it, but if you look down, you can see they're bowed out just a little bit, okay? You want to make sure to bow them out just a little bit more. So I literally just put a little bit of pressure on there, okay? Bow it out just a little bit. And I'll tell you why I'm going to do that in just a minute. But you don't want to do it too much to where it's you know, all wavy and everything. You don't want it to be like that. You just want to bow it out just a little bit more. You can see that like literally I didn't even do much, but just, just a little bit of bowing out will help you um, whenever you're making sure to put your screen on there and your if your frames are bowing in here, because that'll be the big problem everybody has, your frames will slide in here. Um, if, if that's happening, then it's because you need to bow this out a little bit. You can literally, I have a corner here that's one inch tall and then I just stick it on there and then just push down and then drag the screen and keep pushing down. And I'll do that on each side, okay? And I'm not putting any pressure on there, but you can put a little bit of pressure, don't put too much, but do it on all four sides. But just a little bit, not too much, because you can definitely bend it too much and it really won't look good at all. Um, and then you can take, you know, be a, be a judge on, on, on uh, how much it's actually bowing out. It's really hard to see on the camera itself, but it's bowed out just a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. Now, um, I like to use something, uh, something that's in the shop we can use, uh, we'll just say a pin, okay? See how the pin has little notches on there? We just wanna make sure that our pull tabs are lined up really, really nice. So on this one, we'll just do the first notch, okay? So we'll put it on there like so. Same thing on this side, okay? And now you can, of course, make a paint paddle and put tape on there and have certain ones we always just try to do it's probably about an inch and a half away from the frame um, on a side on the screen this size if it's a smaller screen we get closer to this frame and if it's a bigger screen we just I, I would still do it you know about this way because the reason why these are here these pull tabs are here um, and they're supposed to mirror your your uh, springs because that's how you're going to get it back in the window but you want to try to push up at the top if you're doing the window if you're putting your screen in from the inside you want to push up on the top and once you push up on the top, your screen should swing in and then you could just grab this and pull it to you. Um, it's not typically made to just pull, you know, these two and then make the springs work like that. It doesn't really work like that. But it, but, um, but you want to make it where it mirrors that because when you try to pull the screen out, you might not be able to get up in here and push on this. You might have to pull on these, but that's why we use metal ones. Um, and then also you want to make sure that um, like whenever you're, you're pulling it and push, you pu push it out. So your pull tabs go on the inside of the window is what I'm saying. So, okay. So now it's the screening part. We've already got our pull tabs where we want them. And I'm gonna use a 24 inch roll of screen. Um, typically we have 24, 30 inch, 36 inch, and 48 inch. Um, for those of you that are trying to do this as a business, you would wanna have those on hand. 
Um, I generally like to start my spline, or like I said, we're using 185 here. Um, and I think on this size frame, and it'll say it on whatever size frame you buy, it should tell you what size spline to use. So I generally would like to start on this side and let my roll pull right here so that I don't have to put spline. I've seen people do spline right here, first of all, but I don't agree with that. Um, so I'll go ahead and take my roller. And you wanna make sure when you have one of these kind of rollers, it has a groove here. So the fatter ones, the fatter grooves are for bigger spline, like on new screens, like this one here, it's gonna have a little bit fatter. So this is why I would use this one, but you also have a skinnier one that is for smaller screen, which is a lot of, or smaller spline. A lot of times that happens for screen doors and such. Now, I don't know if you, I wasn't paying attention that I was teaching you, but anyway, so. So when you start it, I would just put the, put your end right there in that end of that corner and push it down just to get it started, okay? And then once you get about two inches, we'll say, of it started, put your hand underneath the spline like so, okay? And then put the spline over your hand. Now, when you put it over your hand, bring your finger over and have your finger right here or have it handy enough. Now, sometimes you can just get away with just using your thumb, but sometimes you might need to pull it more tighter um, if the spine's a little bit bigger than the frame, because that'll happen on repairs, then you'll put it on your finger. That's generally what I do, but just for this one, because it's a new screen. Now, you see how I have a little bit of slack in there to begin with. I'm, I'm trying to follow this square, the same little bitty tiny square, all the way across if I can. Now, I know that's gonna drift off a little bit because our frame is bowed out just a tad, but we'll go ahead and just say about six inches here, okay? Um, so I'll go ahead and start wheeling it in. So I'll go ahead and start pushing it in and you can see that I'm just laying that down and it's not rippling and I'm pulling the screen, but it's laying in there really nice. And you wanna take your time with this, especially if you don't have a lot of experience. I mean, typically I could do this screen really fast, but I'm just explaining everything. So that's why it's taking me a lot longer. Now, whenever it starts over here, you wanna push it in just a little bit. Give, you, give yourself a little slack. So push a little bit of slack and take your time with this because you can get really frustrated really quick. Push it in and push all the way to that frame. Now, don't just hand, you know, put all your weight in your hand and roll over this because you're going to damage the frame. So you want to be gentle with that, okay? And then you want to pull the screen like so, okay? And then start sliding that thing in there. Okay. Now, one problem that I see happening too as well with people that do are doing screens is right here, they lose their mojo and they don't have the pull tab, the pull tab is moved. Don't be that guy, okay? Make sure the pull tab is in the right spot. That one's perfect. That one is perfect. If you need to move it, now is the time because you got this free, which is why I always say, you know, now I don't like starting right here, I like starting over here because I can still lift up my screen if I need to and move my pull tabs right now. And then it's still pulling like it already has spline on this side. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start Pushing that spline in on this last part. Now this part is kind of tricky at times. This is where the screen is gonna to try to pull itself inward. So you wanna make sure you have a little bit of slack right here. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. And when you put that spline in there, it's gonna pull it tight, believe me. It might look like there's gonna be a bubble, but I promise you, it's gonna be tight. So I'll go ahead and, like I said, I'll just try to keep that same square, put it on here, and just do a couple inches at a time. Don't get too much in a hurry because it will bow in, I promise you it will. And sometimes I even have to redo screens, even though I take my time and I get, or even if I get in a hurry, especially if I get in a hurry. But don't be beating yourself up if you gotta do a screen more than once, because it's gonna happen. You know, factor that into your price, make sure you're charging enough to where you're not breaking the bank if you have to redo a screen, because it's gonna happen. All right, so now that we got all that nice and rolled in there, I mean, there's no bumps, no waves. This is the last part. And this part should be pretty easy, but you still wanna have a little bit of slack. I'm pushing my hand right here, and I'm making a little bit of slack before I put the spline in, okay? And I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull it to me, and I'm drawing that line with the spline, but I'm, it's also not ripply, and it's not, you know, the, the, the spline is going down real nicely. But it's because I've done it so many times and I know how much to pull. And that just, sometimes things like that just happen over time, so it's not, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world um, for everybody. I mean, some people can just do it. You know, they can just pick it up really quickly. 
Now I'm gonna take a razor blade, and I like to use a breakaway razor blade because whenever you do pet screen, you're gonna need a new one. So go ahead and cut off the end of this piece here. Okay. All right. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is, this is another reason why I do the spline last. I'm gonna go ahead and cut. I'll make sure that these corners are in and I, that's why I like using these breakaway ones because I have the blade not out and I can use the plastic corners to push in the spline. Now I can pull the blade out, start trimming away. I get enough where I can get my finger under here and then I'll take the blade and, and make it a little bit wider and then go ahead and cut this side off. Now when you do that, be careful not to cut the frame because I've seen that too. People will cut the frame. Okay, so now I'll shorten it back up. We'll go all the way across here like so. We're cutting the screen roll off of the screen, okay? Now same thing right here, just trim it off. And like I said, it didn't have to be perfect whenever you trim it off, because it's not gonna matter. Now, we can work with the screen, move it around and everything, okay? Now, whenever you're trimming out the screen, you wanna make sure to not put your hand where the blade is so you can cut yourself. So you wanna, you know, have the blade this way and just make sure you're not gonna cut yourself. So I'm going right there on the side of the spline and you wanna try to cut the mesh where the si side of the spline is. And so I'm cutting all up in there and I'm pulling it as I'm going. And it cuts real nice. That way you don't hit that frame because right here will be where you hit the frame too with the thing you'll, you'll with the blade and you'll scratch up the frame. So you wanna be careful of that, okay? Go ahead and get that that part trimmed out. Perfect. Now we go to the next side here. Make sure to push your corners of your spline in. And sometimes you'll see this overhang like this. You just wanna fold it this way and then fold it this way. And then you can see now you'll, you'll be able to cut it a lot easier. See, boom. And then all that got cut by just doing that, okay? And then like I said, you wanna follow along there. Don't cut yourself. And sometimes you, you might have to get close, but you know, just be smart, take your time, because you don't want to cut yourself. I cut myself before. Okay, and then you'll bring that over here, same thing. Once you get a little piece of it, you start pulling. Okay, perfect. And that side's done, and the same thing. You want to fold it this way, fold it this way, and then you'll be able to trim it. Okay, and then right here, just trim up some, get behind it. You can trim it off like that. And then all you have left is this little piece right here. And then like I said, you just get into right there where that spline is. And then just start pulling it and trimming it. Okay, there you go. So now you have a perfectly made screen all from scratch just for measurements. Um, this is a nice window screen. And you can see that it's not, I'll show you the quality here. Typically, whenever we do our quality, and I have a checklist too, but I will put it on the edge of the table here, as you can see. Okay, I'll put it on the edge of the table and put both my fingers right here on the edge. Okay, and I know if I can see the table, then I know that it's bowed in too much. If I can't see the table, then I know it's gonna be perfect. And you can see that that's a perfectly straight, straight screen. There's no bow to it, it's perfectly straight. So that's what I'm saying. So when you bow it out just a little bit, it becomes perfectly straight. Put it up here, same thing. You can't see the table at all. That's perfect. And I always check all four corners, okay? And if you're a business like myself, um, and these screens come with a one-year warranty, just the mesh part, frames we do not warranty because people will jack the, the frames up for sure whenever they're trying to put the screen in if they don't know how to do it properly. And I'm gonna make another video later on about how to do that properly, how to pop the screen in, um, but that'll be a future video, okay? So um, I just wanna show you my checklist now, um, my screenshot quality checklist. That way you, you know what to look for when you're done with the screen before you put it in the window, especially if you're a business owner. So here we go. So on our table here, we have it taped to the screenshot quality checklist. Check that the measurements are perfectly correct. Check for manufacturing defects in the screen mesh. Check all four sides on straight line for bow in or bow out. Check spline, because it can be bowed out too much. So you just, one thing, I, I know you've seen me do it, but just be careful on that, because you can bow it out too much. 
Um, check spline and screen for any bubbling out or spine bumps. Check for any bad frames, cuts, or scratch imperfections. Check pull tabs to make sure they are both in the right spot. Verify that everything is exactly what the screen order says. Check that screen is clean and free from dust, dirt, or metal shavings. Tape the screen order to screens and place them in the complete section of our shop, which is this. So you can see all the lettering up there. Um, and this is an order, and I won't show you too much of the screen order. But anyways, this is this is an order that their last name, believe it or not, it's, it's a Y. And uh, so that's kind of how we do it. I'll show you how my screen order forms look. So our screen order forms look like this. We have last name, first name, phone number, date, written by, rescreen, samples, drop off, new screen builds, you know, how much they brought in. And then you can just take notes down there. We normally put the pricing down there. We have them sign um, before they leave and pay before they leave. And then we know what kind of mesh we have. We know what kind of frame options. Uh, colors we have and we left a little spot right there for tan because very rarely we get tan but we'll put tan right there if it is tan but anyways i hope that that helps you guys and i really appreciate you watching this video through the whole thing um this has been uh, a journey for me learning how to do screens and now i hope that i was able to help you with just the experience that i have i hope y'all have a blessed day and any comments would be great any feedback from this video would be great thank you so much have a blessed day peace out